Hello and welcome back to another guide for Lamplighters League. My name is Saiken and today we are going to dive into 10 tips I wish I knew before starting the game. And there are going to be a couple of crispy ones. So, as always, concise to the point, let's get started with our top 10 list. First tip is going to include the overall strategy layer no matter how many agents you do have you can only run one mission per week at the beginning that uh, seems convenient because you're starting typically with three agents but even over time if you are freeing more agents i learned that there are a couple of small side missions typically two of them per week but besides that uh, these resource grab missions or discovery missions you can only do one major mission with a team per week and that really means no matter how many agents you do have anything above five agents will just allow you to have a broader roster to experiment around with agents but you can never run more than one mission per week which brings us to tip number two it is more important to control the doom clock the dreaded doom clock than to gain loot throughout the missions now i say that with a bit of an asterisk uh, please be aware that the game will exponentially scale loot over time so say if you want to do a mission with uh, specific skill points over time you will just get more and more skill points per mission you will get better loot more uh, supplies and more other uh, stuff just on the normal missions however the doom clock uh, specifically for three of the banished cores uh, members will reach breakpoints from which on you cannot reset it any further so make sure that you are controlling the doom clock as good as possible on the doom clock matter later in the game funnily enough and that is tip number three the doom clock is not as important anymore. I wish I knew, tip number three, that there is a so-called last stand mission and that there is also a reset uh, mission called interfering with the gateways. So the way that it works is as follows. Uh, you will get over time one uh, reset gateway mission for every single house meaning if you play that well at the right moment in time the progress of that house will reset to the last breaking point specifically for house Nicastro, that means losing quite a bit of progress for her if you play it right secondly very late in the game the doom clock becomes almost uh, irrelevant because the houses are almost at 40 progress and i wish i knew that the game wasn't over when you reached 40 progress because uh, instead of losing the game you will get a last stand mission there will be as many last stand missions as you want and the last stand mission always comes up um, additionally to the normal uh, mission so it will be a very focused one week on just the last stand mission resetting the clock of the respective uh, bench court member to the last breaking point tip number four don't be afraid of science taking them out will do two things for you number one science typically do have great loot for their respective time when you uh, take them out ether king ethers uh, sometimes even great uh, loot in terms of trinkets and on top of it you will apply a debuff for their progress in the coming week so really what is going to happen is once you take a cyan out you will uh, hamper their progress in the following weeks it's a win-win they can be dreadful at the beginning uh, but i ensure you once you get the hang of them you just need to chew through a little bit more hit points and if you focus them at the beginning of a combat that'll be fine tip number five the undrawn hand cards can be both upgraded with ink and with the same card i did not realize that until very very late in my playthrough because i thought duplicate cards are just that duplicate cards but hold on if you are with your agents and you find the same card that one of your agents already holds you can actually upgrade it by one level specifically very late in the game when you reach level four and five the costs of ink for the respective cards are going to be ludicrously high so you are essentially farming for just a very specific card so additionally 
bonus tip um, 5b so to speak higher versions of the cards sometimes do have bonus effects on them for instance if you do have the inspiration uh, card on level three upwards it also applies cleanse which is a massive massive bonus to that card and there are plenty of other uh, examples as well the web card for instance which uh, slows down enemies on level 5 will regain ability points so making the ability completely free to use so you are well advised to try to upgrade your cards tip number six crowd control is king you definitely want to apply that to your uh, playthrough i wish i knew just how good crowd control was crowd control essentially prevents the enemies from taking their actions and that in return gives you advantages in very few circumstances there is a timer onto something so you're not required to deal the most damage per round but what you need to do is crowd control enemies and there are a couple of um, honorable mentions that i would uh, like to bring forward in uh, terms of crowd control blinding in particular is good because it reduces the hit chance by 50 percent and prevents enemies from taking attacks of opportunity the shocked debuff is very nice because it halves their movement speed and on the first uh, turn also reduces their actions by one uh, the dazed uh, debuff is great because it takes one uh, action away from uh, the enemy and the king of all crowd controls knockdown just basically requires the enemy to take two um, turns to stand up and do nothing but that so complete disabling of an enemy I would highly recommend you to think about how you can apply uh, cooldowns in your particular party composition because they are really, really good. Tip number seven on the note of knockdown in particular, I felt it is uh, required to have another tip around that. Knockdown targets, I wish I knew they have a 100% chance to be hit. They are losing their cover, <clears throat> others can fully hit them as they are lying on the ground and they need two actions to stand up so pro tip uh, 7b in this one if you shock an enemy or daze them uh, and apply knockdown to them at the same uh, time during the same round that is you will prevent them from even standing up in the next round so not only denying one action but uh, effectively two complete turns by just applying these two um, debuffs and stacking them on top of each other Tip number eight, reinforcements will come in later fights. You're seeing a little bit of an example of reinforcements here. Typically, they come through teleporters. You don't see that here, but uh, the teleporters are typically kind of machines with a couple of lights next to them. I wish I knew, and that is tip number eight, that the teleporter lights indicate the number of rounds it takes until enemies will appear. Uh, it is very clear that when a skull is there, they will appear next round. But what is not clear is that the teleporters actually will indicate very, very uh, well in advance when enemies are coming, giving you ample time to prepare that. I understood it late in the game and it was maybe my lack of common sense, but that was a game changer for me completely. Tip number nine, cooldown reductions and cleanse are important mechanics in the game, typically coming from cards and items, so do not disregard them. What I mean with uh, that is cleanse does have the nice side effect that it removes all of the status effects and some of the status effects you wouldn't even believe are considered normal status effects, such as being knocked down can be cleansed. So instead of spending two actions with your agent to stand up, if another agent can cleanse them and remove the status effect of being knocked down, that effectively makes your agent uh, stand up immediately and not lose any uh, action points in return. Um, additionally, cooldown mechanics can completely change the way that the game is being played because all of a sudden what you can do is make sure that uh, you are very liberally using your best abilities and at the same time have plenty of options to reuse them over and over again simply because you do have cooldown reduction i use that um, 
very, very successfully in my run, uh, both uh, with um, my melee bruiser uh, that continuously could use new strike abilities, but also with Anna Sophie, who could use um, her uh, cooldown reduction in order to then motivate others and give them more AP, overall generating more action points per round than you normally could. Um, so it's net net a very positive effect. You should look for both cooldown reductions and uh, for any form of cleanse that you can get your hands on. And tip number 10. Feel free to liberally use consumables and always look for leftover consumables at the end of the mission. Most of the missions, the one that I'm showing as an exception, will not require you to actually flee. You can kill all of the enemies because there won't be unlimited reinforcements. This one here is a bit of an exception, oddball to it, but most of the missions will allow you to simply flee the mission at uh, whatever time you want without any repercussions. And the good part about that is that there are plenty of resources often hidden. The most common one is turn around at the beginning, just look through the entry area and you will see that there is very likely a lot that uh, is laying around uh, there. Many more uh, situations exist where you are well advised to simply uh, look for consumables. What I did is I oftentimes stacked up consumables uh, at the end of the mission, brought them back home, uh, discarded some of them or put them in the stash for future missions and always entered into new missions with at least one or two slots empty so that I can fill up uh, the stash a little bit more. Whether or not you want to do the same is up to you, but I can highly suggest at least taking up that extra resources. They are free. Which brings us to bonus tip number one. Several actions in the game will not take action points. And I didn't know that before I started. Most noticeably, whenever a stress break of the enemy occurs that you can see here as an example, it will not take you an action to move to said enemy and effectively finish them. Keep that in mind because it not only provides a free reposition option, but it also gives you the option to simply kill that enemy in just one hit and do something after, uh, afterwards. You can see the same uh, principle to be applied whenever you are trying to help up a friend. So say if someone is knocked down, uh, you can either cleanse the knockdown or you're going to be uh, smart as about it. And if a, another agent is near uh, the knockdown agent, you can help them up. Helping up also costs no action, or rather it does cost one action, but the action point is refunded immediately afterwards. So keep that in mind because it will optimize your action economy greatly. Which brings us to bonus tip number two. Believe it or not, you get two bonus tips this time. Having different types of heroes will be very beneficial. So there are basically three types of heroes. Um, the heroes are categorized into bruisers uh, that do have the out of combat ability to charge down and knock down walls. Technicians that do have uh, the out of combat abilities to open doors and throw uh, shock traps and scoundrels which can be sneaking out of combat not be seen if they don't move and they can climb high ground plus assassinate people with back steps from behind or knock uh, down so make sure or try to make sure that you do have one of each type of uh, these uh, characters in a good party uh, because it will gain access to additional resources. Many of the levels do have um, all three of those um, obstacles, knockdown walls, openable uh, locks and high ground that you need to climb in order to gain additional resources. And all three of them might be worth your time. And that, dear Lamplighters, brings us to the very end of today's episode. Those were 10 things that I wish I knew before starting Lamplighters League. I hope the tips were helpful for you. If they were, please consider to leave a like and a comment down below because that will help to give the video the attention it needs and helps other Lamplighters to also gain access to the 10 tips that they might need in order to successfully 
finish their adventure. Thanks for watching guys. If you are looking for more content around lamp lighters, leak specifically guides, I do have a lot of uh, them available. So see you soon on my channel and take care. Bye bye.